Are you brave enough to face your worst nightmares and encounter the supernatural world behind the veil? In the uncharted territories of the unknown, you find that reality is just a suggestion and the supernatural is where the party's at. Today I'm going to take you on a spine-tingling journey where the shadows come alive and the secrets lurk to get revealed. I'm a real estate agent and often travel across the USA to close deals. On sunny June 9th, 2008, I got a call from one of my clients. He was going to sell a mansion belonging to his great-great-grandfather and offered me $30,000 if I successfully closed the deal. So I went to California, met with the buyers, closed the deal, and got my hands on the money that would change my life forever. I felt the happiness until something happened that scared the hell out of me. On my way back home, my car broke down in the middle of the forest. There was no mechanic shop or mobile repair service nearby. So, before the wolves could make me a feast, I locked my car, carried my briefcase and started walking in search of a place to rent. After a few minutes, I stumbled upon a hotel similar to old Victorian buildings and looked like it had been plucked straight out of a spooky movie. Peeled paint was lingering on the wall, and the windows were cracked. I pushed the old wooden door, and it creaked ominously. As I stepped inside, my nose got hit by a musty smell. The lobby was nearly dark, and a flickering lamp was hanging in the center. It was mysteriously moving when even a single gust of air was not there. Caught in confusion, I moved towards the reception counter and rang the bell four to five times, but no one came. I waited for a few minutes, but no sign of staff or someone from the management was there. I noticed a sign on the wall reading, Room Available. $50 a night. It was really a steal for me. My greed got over my morals. I took out $50 out of my wallet, put them over the counter, grabbed my briefcase and headed towards the creaky wooden stairs. The upper floor's hallway was dimly lit, the carpet was tattered, and all the rooms were unlocked, like they were already ready to welcome me. So, I decided to get into the room number 14, but when I held the knob of the door, something scratched against the door from inside. My bones froze with fear, and my heart started racing like I was tied to the trunk of a tree alone in the forest. I mustered up my courage and opened the door, because there was no option of going back. It was raining heavily, and the lightning was making the hotel look like a creepy place. However, when I entered the room, my soul sensed the presence of someone else in the room who shut the door as I stepped in. Suddenly, I started feeling that it was freezing cold there. Even when it was the middle of summer, my body started shivering and my teeth rattled. I fell on the bed with terror, but it was old, creaky and sounded like I was a mountain that fell on the planks of wood. Though the sheets were purely white, they smelled smoky. Shivers of fear were making my spine shatter. But that was not the end. I looked to the left side. There was a mirror on the wall. I caught a glimpse of myself in it, but someone dressed in white with a face covered with long hair was also standing behind me. My heart started pounding. I looked back with thunder speed, but no one was there. This was the time I realized I made a mistake by staying in this haunted hotel. Before I could look at anything else, I decided to run away from the place as soon as possible, but my fear got the best of me when the door refused to open. I started punching the door. My hands got hurt, but I was able to make a hole for escape as the door was made of centuries old wood. As I passed half of the hallway, strange noises started coming out of the rooms and the doors were shutting and opening by themselves. Moreover, I felt that the same thing I saw in the mirror was following me and its hands were approaching my neck. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and my spine froze with chills. It pulled me back to the same room and pushed me in front of the mirror. But for a few seconds, I closed my eyes and all I could hear was the sound of my own breathing. But the silence broke and the ghostly figure whispered in a lyrical voice, Help me. Please help me. I was not able to figure out what was happening. The voice grew louder and more urgent like the figure was about to cry. I was unable to figure out whether it was a male or a female, but the notes were closer to male, and shrillness resembled the voice of a sweet decent lady. Suddenly, the figure disappeared from the mirror, and only the outline of its voice remained in the room. Unable to figure out where it was calling for help, I gathered my courage and asked in my quivering voice, Who are you? What do you want from me? I'm trapped. 
The voice whispered. I didn't know what to do at the moment. Was someone playing a prank on me? Or is there someone trapped in the mirror? I went close to the mirror and reached out to touch the glass, and my hand went right through the center as if nothing was there. I pulled my hand back and tried to pick my briefcase and ran away. That's when I heard someone coming towards my room in a slow and deliberate way. My heart caught the pace of the bullet train. The door creaked open, and a strange-looking man was standing there. Something was really off about him. His eyes were sunken, dark and red. His mottled skin was gray, and his face was telling that he hadn't slept for many weeks. I asked him, Who are you? He ignored my voice like I was dumb. He slowly started coming towards me with murderous rage in his eyes. I started stepping back and reached close to the mirror. The voice behind the mirror started whispering again, You have to help me. Save me, please. I put my hand inside the mirror. But the man grabbed me from behind and tried to suffocate me by wrapping his strong arms around my neck. After several attempts, I was lucky to escape from his grip and with a final burst of energy, I pushed him back and got out of the room. The man was trying to get up from the floor, but I was lucky to grab my bag, shut the door and lock it. Without looking back again, I started running through the hallway and stairs. Finally, I reached the exit and started running as fast as I could. This time I was not afraid of the wolves or any other creature from the forest because what I already saw was enough to show me a glimpse of what death looks like in reality. I still felt that the ghostly figure portrayed to be a victim and the creepy old man were following me to get revenge for invading their place. So I started running faster and reached the place where I left my car. I got into the car and locked the doors in haste. You would not believe that the car which refused to start a few hours back started with a single ignition and started driving at full speed without caring about which direction I was going. As I drove away, I couldn't help but wonder who was there behind the mirror and what that old man had to do with freedom. Has someone been trapped by that man behind the mirror? Or it was just my mind hallucinating me due to the strange atmosphere of the hotel? I never knew for sure, but one thing was 100% certain. I won't be going back to any haunted place ever again. Even after many years have passed, the mysterious room, the spooky encounters with the creepy mirror still haunt me and I end up thinking about the relationship between the voice and the man. How funny it sounds. I thought the bag full of money was going to change my life forever, but the creaks and groans from the hotel definitely changed it forever.